tap into that. I got three C's that's going to help uh, know peace, not just know peace, but live it. Amen. It's one thing to know that we have peace with God, but it's another thing to know how to live it. And so here's the first thing. The first C is confess. We need to confess. This is a practice that we've gotten out of, right? We need to have a community that we can confess to. It's great to confess to God, Lord, I sin against you and only you. But we need to have some men. We need to have some women in our lives that we can confess our sins to. Amen. So that they could do what? Talk about us? So that they could go and gossip about us? No, so that they can pray for such a one. Amen. And so we need to start being honest with God. Peace begins when we drop the act, right? When we drop the charades and really start getting real with God. And that's what I love about confession. Confession confession forces us to get real about God. John 1, 9 says this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Who is he? God. Amen. He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's funny how that works. Justification imputes righteousness to us. And what happens is like this never-ending funnel of unrighteousness as we have a life built on what? Repentance. And so we need to confess. We need to get into the habit of confession. Why do we need to confess? Because here's what confession does. Confession clears the way for peace to flood in. It clears the way for the peace. Have anybody ever confessed and you felt like a weight just, just lifted off of you? That's the power of confession, that that peace is flooding into your heart. So start confessing, all right? Two, commit. We need to commit. We need to make peace with God a priority in our lives. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 puts it this way. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, right? We can boldly approach the throne of grace because of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will do what? Will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's about a daily commitment that builds up the trust muscles. Some of us, it's hard for us to trust God because we're not spending time with God to know the character of God, to know the mind of Christ, to know how loving he can be and how comforting he can be. He can be. I had a pastor. I was out playing golf with some pastors, and I asked a question. They, they're big-time leaders. And I was like, man, what, what advice would you give a young man that is really going after his faith and going after his calling and really walking in faith into some, some opportunities and doors that are opening for him and things are really about to break open for him? What, what advice would you give him? The pastor said, spend more time in the presence of God. Spend more time in his presence. And I'm seeing that to be true in my life. And so we need to commit, commit, commit to trusting him. And that happens when we spend time in the presence of God. Third but not least, and worship team, you could come forward. Worship team, you could come forward. Celebrate. Celebrate. And so not only do we need to confess, not only do we need to commit more time to, to him, we need to celebrate. We need to finally live like we got some peace. And the funny thing about it is it's hard to talk to some of you. It's hard to talk to some of you because when I look at your face, I'm kind of like, man, good night. What are they going through? Because it looks like you're chewing on some lemons and some rocks at the same time, right? And so we need to celebrate. We need to share that joy. John 14, 27 puts it this way. Peace, I leave with you. This is what he gives. This is the character of God. He's leaving us with peace. Peace, I leave, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give you, not, I do not give to you as the world gives. And that's the problem. We think that God has given us peace in the way that the world gives peace. And it's not like that. That's so far from the truth. He said, I don't give it the way that the world gives you. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace that he gives to you, it surpasses all understanding and it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. He's not going to take it back. Give me my peace back. No, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. This is the reason to smile during your storm. This is the reason for you to laugh in the face of adversity and laugh in the face of our adversary because we have the peace that surpasses all understanding and we can celebrate. It's celebrate worthy. 
all right? It's time for us to start celebrating because you've got peace with God. So it's time to start letting that peace show. We need to confess, we need to commit, and we need to celebrate. So what does, it all, what does this all mean? Imagine leaving this room today knowing that no matter, no matter what turbulence hits your proverbial plane, you've all seated in the presence of God, buckled in, and are at peace with God. You need to know that. God is not at war with you. God doesn't have hostility towards you. If you are a friend of God, and a friend of God simply means that you believe, you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Imagine walking into a stressful situation this week and just feeling calm because you not only have the peace of God, but you're at peace with God. Imagine falling and making a mistake, and I mean missing it bad this week. And you just take a step back and receive his grace, and you repent, and then you have the reassurance of knowing that you have peace with God. God ain't angry at me. He emptied that out on Christ. That's what just gets me about this thing. It's hard. And I'm, can I be vulnerable real quick? Sometimes it's hard for me, and I know others can relate to this, to accept the grace of God. Because there's this nature in me that wants to make it right myself, but I can't. And God knew that, and so he put his son in my place to absorb that wrath. And not only to absorb it, but to make it right. And so now I'm in right standing with God. That's hard for me sometimes. Even being saved as long as I've been saved, that's still hard for me to know that God's grace is that powerful and that he is that loving. And so friends, remember you remember anything, if you remember anything from this message today, know that peace, peace with God, it's not a place, it's a person. His name is Jesus Christ.